Jeff Bezos, a billionaire, he's scheduled to go into flight, go into space tomorrow morning. It's a, an a historic flight. He's doing this with his company, Blue Origin. So we want to talk a little bit more about this. This is Leroy Chow. He's the former NASA astronaut, also former commander of the International Space Station. And Leroy, it's great to have you. And you, of course, are very familiar probably with the feeling of goosebumps and kind of the excitement that you get ahead of going into space. And I know what you did is a little bit different than what Jeff Bezos will be doing tomorrow, but you're a veteran of four space missions. So just put this into context, I guess, for our viewers. What will tomorrow's flight be like? Well, tomorrow will be very exciting for all four of these uh, people. It's the first time any of them have gotten into a spacecraft on top of a rocket and will launch and touch space. So uh, I'm sure they're very excited. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they've been uh, familiarized with their equipment, and I'm sure they're looking forward to this. Uh, uh, probably need a little uh, help sleeping tonight, <laughs> you know, so that they can uh, get a little bit of rest before getting up and getting into the vehicle. It'll be a very quick flight. It's only about an 11 minute flight. And so they'll get in the vehicle, they'll launch underneath a rocket. It'll propel them just to the von Karman line, a little bit past, which is the internationally recognized boundary of space. Uh, they'll have a few minutes of weightlessness and of the beautiful view of the earth and the and the, the thin blue line, as it's called, of the, uh, the atmosphere of the earth and of course the blackness of space before their capsule re-enters the atmosphere and then they'll come down under a parachute to to land back down on the ground so it should be a quick flight but very exciting one this is uh, really just the beginning of the commercialization of space we're at the infancy right now I'm wondering, and I think a lot of other people are wondering, what's the timeline for doing just a little bit more, going up 30 minutes, 60 minutes, living there for a couple days? How close are we, and is this within reach in the near future? Well, actually, you know, we have uh, flown several what we call space flight participants over the last, oh gosh, uh, probably 15 or so years, maybe a little more. And uh, basically, they've uh, been brokered through the Russian Space Agency and flown aboard Russian spacecraft. Uh, but, uh, you know, those those uh, orbital flights to the International Space Station have cost, you know, anywhere between 20 and 50 million dollars ish. Uh, we see that uh, there's, there are going to be commercial flights on SpaceX spacecraft coming up soon. Uh, again, taking very wealthy individuals to the International Space Station for around that price tag. So this part of commercial space is brand new. This is a suborbital flight. You're going to touch space for a few minutes and then fall back to the Earth. Uh, but the, the cost is substantially less. Instead of around 50 or so million, you're, you're talking about 250,000, right? But um, <laughs> so it's still out of reach for most of us, but uh, a lot closer than uh, the uh, one week at the ISS price tag. It is exciting, though, because it's generating a lot of interest. Richard Branson, Jeff Bezos, obviously household names and, and uh, getting more of the general public interested in spaceflight and space exploration. Leroy, you mentioned how expensive this is, and we also, I think when we've talked about space tourism in, in the past, I think nearly every single person has this notion how it's only for the ultra-wealthy, it's only for the rich people. They will be the only ones that will be able to afford something like this. Do you think that's going to be the case looking out maybe 10, 20, 30 years from now? It's going to be the case until there's some kind of a breakthrough in propulsion technology to where uh, we are able to build inexpensively very robust rocket engines because uh, to get a that much energy into a vehicle to get it into orbit. I mean, you can, it takes, you know, you have to get up to a speed of around Mach 3, about three times the speed of sound, around 3,000 miles an hour to get into space to touch it. It's not enough to keep you in orbit. To go to orbit, you've got to get to Mach 25 or around 17,500 miles an hour. And so uh, a lot of energy has to go into the vehicle, especially to go orbital. And so rocket engines are the way to do that. And a lot of moving parts, very, very expensive. That's why it's only for the wealthy right now to buy tickets to go do these kinds of things. But if and when we end up with that breakthrough uh, of, of robust, inexpensive rocket engines, and I don't know if 10 years, if we can do that in 10 years, but um, that's what it's going to take. 
Well, I just want to follow up on that uh, before we go here. I mean, you take a look at the, the spaceships of Virgin Galactic and Blue Origin, vastly different than the SpaceX offerings, uh, where which the Falcon 9 can return and land vertically, uh, quite the achievement in my opinion. Um, are, are Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic going to be able to develop their own rockets that do this? Or are, do you see them kind of staying with the current model, which uh, they have reusable or disposable parts? Well, actually, both systems are fully reusable. Uh, Virgin Galactic, uh, they, the spacecraft is taken up to about 50,000 feet underneath a carrier aircraft, which kind of serves as its first stage. It's dropped, and then it lights its rocket engine, comes back and lands, and, and you know both vehicles are designed to be reused. Same with the uh, Blue Origin. The capsule is designed to be reused, and actually, uh, their rocket booster uh, was the first one to successfully land vertically, although uh, you know the, the profile was a little easier than for the Falcon 9. But you're right, um, Falcon 9, they've been re retrieving and refurbishing the first stages for quite some time now. And uh, Blue Origin going to do the same. And Blue Origin has a number of large rockets under design. And they're they're pretty secretive, so we don't know exactly where they are. Uh, but uh, yeah, they intend to use the reusability factor as well to bring those launch costs down. Both Jeff Bezos and, uh, Rich and um, uh, Elon Musk very interested in bringing the cost of access to space down as much as possible. Leroy Chow, we really appreciate getting your perspective on all this and helping us better understand what to expect for tomorrow, really what this means for space tourism going forward. A former NASA astronaut and also former ISS commander, thanks again.